Okay, so I want to talk today a little bit about how I'm going to use my process of working on this house with glazing. So I, let me show you the photo I'm working from. It's this photo. I cropped um, the larger photo, one of the photos of Brooks, and I like the contrast of the shadow kind of raking across the pay, uh, this house. And so that's what I chose. So I cropped the photo and then I started it at this point because I'll tell you what I did is that I taped off the edges and I traced the photo onto here and um, and then I did some very light flat washes for the lighter areas. And even though there's a shadow going across here, there's shadows on here, and shadows on here, I painted the whole thing green because I wanted a consistency in the color when I glaze the other colors across. So I think I'm going to attempt to do that and uh, see how far I get here. Um, God, I wish you guys, I could show you guys the photo at the same time here. Let me see if I can move this a little bit. Um, so anyway, here, here we go, that's better. Okay, all right, um, so I'm gonna start with some of the lines that go across here for the slats. I think what I'll do is just um, use some of the same color that I had mixed up before, which was kind of a green and a Payne's gray, and um, I'm gonna paint those in so it's kind of like a darker shadowy color of green. And um, one of the things that might, I don't know if this will work, but one of the things that might help, well, it helps me, let's see if I can do this without getting my head in the page. It helps me to go across here, across horizontally, then vertically. It helps me for lines to do that. So, I'm going to go ahead and do that first. And I'm not using a straight edge. I mean, I did use a ruler. I did use a ruler for these lines. And some of this stuff, when I traced it out, I didn't even bother tracing out the trees very much. I just traced out the architectural stuff with the photo because I really wanted to get some of that, some of those markers really clear in here. So I'm going to go ahead and um, go over these lines that I made where you have a lot of lines in two point perspective. They're kind of joining at this beam here. And I'm basically just going over my pencil line. And let's see what happens here with that. It's always better to go, you know, to really be conservative when you're putting in your darks because you can always go darker, but unfortunately with watercolor, you can't go lighter. And, um, oh, I messed up that one, but that's okay. Anyway, um, yeah, and so when I just, you know, when I did the washes, I was really careful to protect my whites in this painting. Um, we need the white beams that are on the um, house, and I'm going to leave those white. Okay. All right. Now, for the shadow color for this, I think I'm going to go with um, kind of a darker version of that, but I'm going to put a little bit of warmth into it. So I'm going to put a little Payne's Gray and even a little bit of the orange. Um, you know, because like I said a lot of times, if you use a little bit of the complement in the color to get the shadow color, it really works well. So actually, instead of orange, I think I'll just put a little bit of red in here so that I don't veer off from what I had stated. And, um, and uh, you can see 
here there's a big light tree so I didn't draw that tree but actually I might sketch out a little area where I think I'm going to leave space for that tree to happen here so uh, I'll paint around it because that's very light and once I put these these greens in it's not going to be it's not going to be possible to lighten that area up over this dark green so gosh can't see my head can you I hope not <laughs> okay all right and then I'm gonna go ahead and um, move down here and keep going and I'm basically just doing kind of doing flat washes over the um, flat wash that I did in the light green. I'm continuing this flat wash like that. Okay, I hope I mixed up enough of this color. It's important to have enough of the color mixed when you're doing this stuff. Okay, now remember, you can always go over it if it's not right, but um, there's a slight, oh, it's like, this is interesting. I'm gonna get a smaller brush. There's a slight um, ridge here where the shadow starts. I don't have my head in here, do I? <laughs> okay, wait. A slight thing here where the shadow starts so I'm gonna go ahead and um, paint that in and I'm being really careful not to get into my white area because like I said you cover up that white and you can't really get it back so <clears throat> my cat's crying okay um, yeah, and then I can still see the little slat lines in here. I can see them. Turn my page a little. Turn this a little bit. It's really easier to do horizontal lines when you're working horizontally. Let's see how that goes. <laughs> some no don't come up here God. okay um all right now I'm going to do this part because this was interesting there's a shadow here that goes to about here and then well I might have gone a little far but I didn't really draw this so I'm just going to go ahead and paint it Just gonna go ahead and paint it. And now I'm working like I'm making flat washes. I'm really trying to keep that movement going because um, I want the tone to be really even on this painting. It's not always something that you necessarily want to strive for in watercolor painting, but for this particular glazing thing, that's what I decided that I wanted to do. I'm going to fix this. I did not even draw this shadow in, and in a way I kind of wish I had, but that's okay. It's uh, no big deal. Okay. And you know something, you don't have to be a slave to the photograph. You're just creating a convincing illusion. And that's the way, and that's the way it is with painting. You know, you don't have to do exactly what the photograph has in it. You know, I'm certainly not because I got 
little far afield here. But anyway, that's how I'm doing it. So, um, oh, I forgot this thing up here. Okay. And this is weird. This has these little, I think I'll put those in afterwards, but these little slats. And so I'm going to go ahead and paint the shadow part in here, and then I'll put the slats in afterwards. Okay. Anyway, um, sop that up a little bit. And um, next, let's see, next, next, next. Oh, there's a cast shadow on the roof that I want to get. And so I used Payne's Gray. I used a Payne's Gray wash on that roof. And um, now I'm going to go back in there with Payne's Gray as well. And I'm going to attempt to put this shadow in here. So I'm just going to use one stroke. And then the edges on this shadow are a little bit soft. So I'm going to dry my brush and then just kind of, well, I'm going to wet the brush first and then kind of um, try to soften those edges a little bit. And there's an even softer cast shadow. Hmm. I'm gonna go back in, uh-oh. Well, now you can watch me try to save this because I meant to keep it dark and somehow it bloomed a little bit, got a little bit lighter, okay. Anyway, okay, I'm going to soften this too, just soften it a little bit. So I wet my brush and then I dried it a little bit and uh, anyway, okay, all right, now what? Hmm. Um, well, I think what I'll do is try to do the shadow and light sides on the white. So I'm leaving the white white, and I'm going to find a good shadow color for the white. And that's going to be, I, I think for a shadow color for white usually is blue is good. Ultramarine blue with a little bit of red in it, like a little bit of um, rose. So what are we talking about? Kind of a violet color. Uh, so let's see. Sometimes with a little Payne's gray, so it's not bright purple. There's nothing that looks more unprofessional than bright purple shadows. Okay. Yeah, this is a good color. Okay, so this is kind of a violet. I'm mixing up kind of a violet, putting a little bit of Payne's gray in there. I always have my tester here to see what it looks like. I uh, I kind of like that. I think that'll work. I think I'm going to add a little bit more blue to that color. Okay. Yeah, I think that's good. Okay, all right, now I have to look at, um, I have to look at where the, um, where there are shadows here. Well, there's some cast shadows. There's kind of a shadow that goes, <clears throat> I'm gonna turn this because like I said, it's easier for me to do horizontal lines. There's kind of a shadow that goes along the edge of this. And if I want to soften the edge of that shadow so that it blends, like I did before, I'm just going to take water and I'm going to kind of soften that edge a little bit. <laughs> okay, and I'll turn this back. And then um, there's some cast shadows for the leaves. And those I'm just going to go ahead and... You know, like I said, it doesn't have to be exactly where the leaves' shadows are exactly. Be 
something like it, something like an approximation, because what you're really doing is you're creating an illusion. And so, anyway. Um, And so I'm leaving this white, oh dear, I got water on this, okay. I'm leaving this white part white. And, uh, yeah. I'm also gonna use the shadow color to create, um, to, um, I have to be careful not to spill paint on my, Piece because I'm not the neatest painter in the world, I'll tell you. Okay. Okay. Well, this is all looking pretty precise, isn't it? <laughs> So what I'm doing is looking for areas where I can use this sort of sh white shadow color that I got, that I mixed up. Um, and I'm putting it in here. All of this is in shadow, oh, except for maybe some little small stuff, which I'll leave. There are just some little hints of light poking through the trees, which are the trees are what's casting the shadow on these things. And so I'll just try to get that. I'll try to get those little specks of light in there just to um, keep it consistent. Okay. All right. Um, you know, I think it's what's important is, uh, well, drawing is important. I mean, there's a lot of different ways to do drawing, but, um, but if you're doing something like buildings, you know, it's, it's fine to do loose drawings. This is my opinion, but I think if you're doing something like buildings, it's, it really helps to have some of the important angles in the buildings really um, cor done correctly. In other words, you know, the right angles stay, keep, you know, stay being right angles and, um, and on and on like that. Oh gosh. Okay, this has a bunch of like little cast leaf shadows. So I'm just gonna kinda do the best I can to create those. So it's dappled light. I guess that's what you call that. Dappled light, right. Right. And it's soft. I might go back with some water and go over these just to um, keep the softness of them. already dried so it's kind of created an edge which I didn't want but it's okay let's see if I can soften those up a little bit so I'm going just going back in with my with my water 
soften up these edges a little bit. And I'm going to go ahead and glaze in the shadow on the steps. Oh, there's something I missed here. I missed some of these shadows, some of these um, cast shadows from these plants and stuff. I don't want to. To soften the edges on these too because sometimes when shadows are cast if it's cast if they're cast from a distance like the farther the shadow is away from the object the more diffused it gets on its edges and you'll see that with a shadow that's being cast by an object it's really sharp close to the object and then it gets a little bit more diffused so um anyway on to this um I'll go ahead and put some, um, for that wash, I used kind of an orange and, uh, and a little bit of yellow and a little bit of Payne's gray because I didn't want it bright orange. So now I'm just going to go ahead and mix a darker orange with a little more Payne's gray and see what happens. Here I'm testing it. And it looks pretty good, actually. Okay, so I'm just being coming kind of aware of where the shadow meets the edge here. And uh, so I can kind of get a feeling of these things being cast on here. And that's a little bit dark. Well, that's okay. Added a little bit more water to it. So all of this is in shadow and oh, I want to get that there. And then as it moves down, there's a, uh, okay, this is, this stuff's in shadow too. And then Same thing, there's just kind of dappled light hitting that stair and I guess that's the shadow that the bushes are casting, the shadow on here. And this is pretty, you know, this, this particular shadow looks, it's pretty It's pretty defined. I mean, the shadow itself, because the bush is close, it's not like from trees that are like way over here. The, the bush is close and so the shadow itself is gonna be a little bit more defined. Okay. All right. And then these shadows that are along here, um, they're a little bit looser and lighter, I think. And so, once again, I have some of the light showing through here. And, uh, you know, I'm just going to go for it. And I'm not really trying to copy this exactly because I'm just creating... An illusion, I think. I'm trying to. Anyway. Trees. <laughs> Let's see what happens here. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um. Oh, I should have. Well, okay. Anyway. There's some shadows here. I forgot to paint this with the 
orange underneath, but I'll just go over it with a couple of layers of darker color. Okay. Okay. Well, there's already a nice shadow light um, being established here. Okay. Well, I forgot something. Well, I didn't forget, but this, I want to paint the shadow on this upper thing. And that starts a little bit higher. My cats get really excited when I make videos. I don't know what's up with them. They're carrying on. Okay. Um, yeah, and then I'm going to go in here and kind of look at what's going on here. There's like a shadow that goes across here with a little bit of same stuff, you know, a lot of trees in this neighborhood, a lot of trees being casting shadows and lights and okay, so a lot of doubled light happening here. Okay. All right. Okay, uh, hmm. Okay, well, I think what I'll do is go back, I'll mix up some more of that, um, that shadow color, and because I just ran out, and I'll paint, um, I'll paint this whole area. This whole area is going to be in shadow. It's going to be quite dark, actually. Put a little bit of Payne's gray in here. And um, so for this shadow, I'm using ultramarine blue, a little bit of cerulean blue, a little bit of. Um, that's good. Yeah, a little bit of cerulean blue, a little bit of Payne's gray. And um, all of this is dark, except there's a plant here. So, hmm. Okay, well, I'll start here. God. I'll start here and I'll go ahead and um, I'm going to try to work quickly because, like I said, I want to kind of create a series of washes what okay so this is very much in shadow back here oh gotta get my head in here sorry I should edit that out okay um And I think as the shadow moves down, it gets a little bit lighter. can't space out in watercolor, can you? You have to kind of keep working so it doesn't dry. All right. Turn my page. So what I'm noticing is that this, as it gets maybe further down here, it gets a little bit lighter. And so I might add a little bit of water to my gray wash and then keep working it so that it's almost like a gradated wash, but not. <laughs> I'm 
adding a little more water as I move down here with this shadow, just because I think it gets towards the bottom, it does, definitely gets a little lighter and I'm noticing that too. good okay now and this side too let me just get this here okay. all right um i think i'm gonna go ahead and um working you know thinking about working from light to dark i think i'm gonna go ahead and um Get my lights in with some of these trees, like here. You can see that. So, let's see. I think I gotta mix up some other colors. Yeah. I kinda wish that I'd not put that green wash there, but I'm going to try to save it. So I'm mixing up kind of a yellow, a light yellow color, maybe a yellow orange. Um, gosh. Yellow orange color with a little bit of red in it. Give it some real warmth. Try to make a nice contrast to that cool mint green. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and paint. I'm just gonna paint all of this that because I can go over the darker parts with other colors and whatnot. So. And then this, this just kind of goes down here. Hope for the best. <laughs> and um, on the other side, they have we have some greens that are not quite yellow green, but they're warmer. And so I'm going to put those in. Put in all the yellow greens here because I'm going to go back in and just kind of um, I need a bigger brush. Okay. Okay, I'm getting loose here. Well, this is shaping up, sort of, kind of. Okay, let's see. Now I'm going to put in the greens here. I think I'll get some different greens. You know, there's so many different kinds of greens in nature. If you really look at it, look at a bunch of trees on your street or something, you'll see what I'm talking about. There are really quite a lot of different greens. So. I'm going to go ahead and put in some of these lighter areas here and uh, I can always come back and later and uh, fix that and then um, I'm going to make a little bit slightly different green here because okay. like I said everything's every tree has a slightly different color green, which is interesting. Okay, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and put this here, you know, and um, 
also, well, I think this is like, I'm gonna wait on this one because I think what I'm gonna, well, no, actually, I'm gonna go ahead and put in the approximation of where this is and then I'm gonna glaze, I'm gonna do what they call negative painting and glaze this stuff out of here. And I'll show you what I'm talking about in a minute. So I'm gonna give a, a rough idea of where this plant is. And, um, oh, what I should do, by the way, this is a good trick in case you're, is, you know, is pull out some of the stem. I should have just uh, done that. So I wet my brush, I do this. Can you guys see this? Sorry, I'm migrating. I'm pulling it out. Here I go. Shh. God, you guys. It's so demanding. Okay, hold it. All right. Um. Okie dokie. And then I think before I stop the video, I'm going to put in a little bit of this green color on here. There's a little bit of a, it looks like golf course green. Okay, anyway, maybe that's too green. Is that green in nature? I don't know, maybe not. Here. Okay, anyway. Okay, I'm gonna stop the video and then I'm gonna continue working on this. And, um, Uh, one more thing. I'm going to continue working on this and then I forgot one thing here. This area here. Always some other thing I forget, huh? Okay. Anyway. Yeah, I'm gonna continue working on this and um, and maybe I'll come back and, and, and film it when I'm working further.